Behavior change communications interventions have a lot of potential and they can effectively complement regular policy change initiatives or technical assistance. A critical factor though is how to motivate people. Once you've given people all the information and all the knowledge, you sometimes find that people still don't do what you would like them to do. Claudia, how do you motivate people? Very good question, something that we've been struggling with a lot. So first of all, I would say that uh, once you do give people the proper uh, appropriate knowledge and they have the information, it's the first step. Creating awareness about a problem and creating awareness about what can be done about it is the first step. Of course, you need an enabling environment which then allows people to actually change that behavior and see the value of that new behavior that is better or higher than the old behavior. And in order to be able to show that, you need the enabling environment. If you tell people to wash their hands and, and, and go to a, a toilet instead of in the out, then you need to actually have that, that they can use it. If you tell women that they should exclusively breastfeed, you have to also understand their family situation and whether they are actually able to do that. Women work, women go to work, they can't take their baby, so you need to create the enabling environment together with the information that you are sharing and, and wanting them to uh, absorb. I would think that people are not necessarily motivated by information provided to them. Sometimes they like to follow other people that they respect, that they like for a reason that is not necessarily related to the subject that you're trying to convey. Are you making use of leaders for change? Any mother and father is interested in seeing their children do well. So just providing that information to have their children do better is enough motivation for them to actually follow that advice. You don't even need anybody to tell them or a role model for that. At the same time, it's of course excellent to have role models who show the same behavior that you want people to do, that are looked up to, that are um, seen as being uh, interesting, cool, especially when you talk about young mothers. This is something that we're trying to promote with national campaigns. There's a lot of people now that, or a lot of organizations that start using ambassadors etc. I think also that um, a very successful approach has been uh, through media, through soap series, through um, television. A lot of people watch these kind of series and you can pass a lot of very interesting messages and show a lot of very uh, crude behavior through these shows and people do tend to look up to that and, and adopt it. So there's, there's opportunities. There's many. We have to stay creative. Often you're facing quite some resistance to the changes that you're working on and stunting levels remain high in a particular country. Would you say that this is part of the political economy? Part of the political economy, part of the lack of time that you can actually spend. Uh, very often these messages are, are passed in a, in a, during a busy time, during a visit for something else, or many other people are around, so people can't really talk about their problems. And what we see is that then if you bring them together with other people, the positive deviants in the same situation, then they have more opportunity to talk and more time to, to look through problems and share similar problems, and then things may change. But definitely, again, the political economy, the, the, the enabling environment is really important because you need to, to also um, reach the people that influence them. Like in, in many countries, it's the mother-in-law. In many countries, it's, it's village chiefs that actually have still a lot of influence. So under, the religious leaders, understanding who influences who is a part, big part of this. We're here with the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Do you think that the donors should change their approach, their attitude towards behavior change communications and get more involved in that area? First question. Second question. Do you think that the global donors should play a more active role in trying to change the political economy in the recipient countries by talking to the local leaders? Definitely. Great idea. Definitely. I think we should. One thing what is very important is that we have a common voice so that we all agree on the same messages and that we don't start passing different messages because that's been detrimental in the past and that's something that you absolutely want to avoid. So having that, I wouldn't tell any donor to do anything different or change their approach before really understanding what it is that they're doing and being able to discuss what they are doing. So at this point, I think it's really understanding each other, talking to each other, sharing experiences and developing common messages. 
Are there enough people in the donor agencies that are specialized on behavior change? Some do, many do actually. I think it's actually something that has, has really grown over the last 10, 20 years since I've been working on, on nutrition, the last 25 years. I mean, there, there has been a lot of attention to behavior change. We know it's so important. Part of the biggest problem is that you have to do it at scale and you have to have the time and the resources to do it. And that has just not been following yet. We know, we, we're starting to know quite well what to do and how to do it, what kind of messages, how to pass the message, communication, but doing it at scale, sustained through country systems, with enough resources, not there yet. So that is your key message? Probably, yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. Thank you.